Today, we're gonna to talk about how to run on a treadmill. Eleven point zero miles, eight minutes, twenty three seconds per mile today on the treadmill, running for about an hour and thirty, somewhere between an hour thirty and hour forty minutes. Uh, logging a lot of time. I still haven't figured out how to get to that marathon mode or that unlimited mode. My goal is to do about 90 minutes or uh, or 10 miles, uh, but I was feeling pretty good today. I was actually, I don't want to say enjoying the treadmill, but I was actually kind of enjoying the treadmill today and it's taken me a while. I'm normally one of those people that just absolutely hates running on the treadmill. I'd rather run outside in any condition than run on a treadmill, but this winter with some of my marathon training goals, I've decided, you know what, it's time to make peace with the thing. And there's a lot of reasons not to like the treadmill. Mainly, I think it's just misleading. It's a misleading experience. It just it feels very disconnected from road running or running outside. And that's, I think, my biggest problem with it. Whatever the numbers are on the treadmill, it seems like I'm working harder to hit those paces than it would if I were just outside. Like for me hitting 10 minute miles is a relatively easy thing for me to do. But sometimes on the treadmill, like when I'm starting up, it seems like it's a little bit fast. And so I just, I'm feeling a little bit disconnected with it. And combine that with the fact that when I put my foot pod on, whatever number it's giving me, like a 10 minute mile, I'm actually running slower than that. So the disconnect is even further in reality compared to what the numbers are. And so mentally I have a hard time dealing with it. The other thing about it that I don't like is that the pre like set activities that you can do, like the hill climb or whatever, it makes it look like you're doing rolling hills. And I've talked about this before in another video years ago. The treadmill doesn't do, uh, it does uphill, but it doesn't do downhill. Some of them do a little bit of a slight negative uh, incline, but not to the same extent it can do incline. And so there's no such thing as rolling hills on a treadmill. It's all just like a straight up mountain climb. Uh, if you want to do incline, I generally don't do incline uh, at all or just hit it once it's like whatever the minimum number is uh, I think it's a 0.5 it, which is an arbitrary number maybe that corresponds to degrees probably doesn't because uh, none of the numbers on a treadmill correspond really to anything in real life although I do think that time and, and distance are, are, are relatively okay uh, but here's how I've been using it here's how I've still found it helpful part of my marathon training goals for the winter is not to really do a lot of speed work, interval work, or even tempo runs necessarily, but it's just to build aerobic base. Get in a lot of miles, as many as I can over the winter, and build that aerobic base, that endurance. So I don't need to be pushing at higher tempos. I need to be getting out there and moderate to slow runs. So that way the aerobic base, the part that's not using anaerobic activity and burning through my energy reserves, uh, that part, the other part, the aerobic part, uh, that is fueled by whatever I'm breathing in and any nutrition that I'm taking in during the run. Being able to survive and, and have a relatively strong base to work on that, I think that's the part that keeps you from hitting the wall. That's the part that gets you from having a great half marathon to also having a great marathon. So building aerobic base is what I need. And so I need to slow down compared to what I might normally end up doing if I'm out on the roads. And in the winter time, like the weather we've been having this week in Chicago, you can't be outside for more than 50 minutes. And if you wanna get in a longer run, you gotta do it on the treadmill. And so I'm trying to think of it that way. The other thing that I'm looking for uh, on the treadmill is, it can be useful for intervals. I went out to like a group fitness class at Runaway Fitness Chicago, uh, I think now two weeks ago. And that was very different. You know, you're, you're hitting the paces, you're accelerating and then coming back down 
doing somewhat of an interval type of run or a tempo run or however you want to phrase it, you're getting the legs turned over really quickly. And it was a lot of fun. It was just a nice way to mix it up in terms of the winter. So I think those are the two ways that the treadmill can actually be really helpful in the winter time. And keeping those in mind, it makes running on the treadmill a little bit easier to kind of deal with and get over some of the, the things that I don't like about the treadmill. And so here's some of my tips in terms of how I kind of had made peace uh, with the treadmill. And the first thing is I try to for just forget about the numbers. Don't worry about pace. Uh, only just think about it from that aerobic base building perspective. Think about how I'm feeling as I'm running on it. Usually these days when I'm on the treadmill, I'm thinking I'm either gonna run for an hour or an hour and a half. And however fast it tells me I ran is however fast I ran, however many distance it gave me is what I, I get at the end. The goal is to run for an hour, 60 minutes or 90 minutes and get that aerobic base kind of workout in. The other thing that I've been doing that I've been liking with the treadmill is to bring a water bottle. I got this one. Uh, I, I won like a, a an Instagram contest or raffle uh, from the Forest Preserve when I was out there with my running buddy one time. Uh, and so that's a nice one, something that you could squeeze into your mouth uh, really easily as you're running. And I usually take a drink, I'll put it, put noon or some other, whatever your favorite sports drink is in there. And every 15 minutes, I'll take a drink. The other thing that I'll do is I'll bring a gel if I'm gonna go for longer than an hour. And then at an hour, I'll usually, uh, anywhere between 45 minutes or an hour, I'll eat a gel. Uh, the next thing that I do to kind of make things a little bit less horrible on a treadmill is to have like a two-tier music approach. So the first thing that I like to do is I'll put on a podcast because in the podcast you can kind of get into it, zone out, or if you're the type that wants to watch videos. I sometimes get motion sick if I watch a video on a treadmill because I'm, I'm bouncing around and trying to like focus on an image and that like messes my eyes up. And so I listen to podcasts or if you want, if you're an audiobook kind of person, I think that'd be great to listen to for like for the first half or up to an hour if you can do that, and then switch to music, something more uh, faster paced, something a little bit more energizing, so that way it breaks up your run a little bit. I think to listen to music for like the entire time might get a little bit uh, fatiguing in and of itself, uh, for me anyway. And the last thing that I tend to do is, uh, while I've been spending this entire video talking about forget about pace, is that I generally will increase the pace as I go. So I might start out at uh, six miles an hour, which is the 10 minute mile pace, uh, or usually seven miles an hour or so. And then after about 30 minutes, I might crank that up a little bit, run for that for another 30 minutes, and then crank it up a little bit more until I'm getting to a place where I feel like I'm uh, running uh, still comfortably, but still running in a way that I'm building more of that aerobic base versus anaerobic base. Uh, but as you warm up, as your muscles get acclimated to the movement on the treadmill, I find it easier to just crank it up like a couple 0 0.2, 0 0.3 miles per hour. And your, your body doesn't really, know, uh, there's an initial transition period, but your body, I think, doesn't really notice. And so by the end, even though you started out slow, which for me is morally defeating, it, by the end, I'm a little bit faster, and so overall the number averages out to something that I'm a little bit more pleased with. And so that has been something else that helps me in terms of after the fact of being pleased with the workout is that overall the number was relatively what makes me happy. And so as much as I try to forget about numbers when I'm on the treadmill and try not to care about it, I still care a little bit. Uh, it's something that works for me. So those are the ways that I like to run on a treadmill and I just try to remember that these are the miles that are really boring and I'm just gonna log them, but I'm doing it at an aerobic level, kind of the moderate to moderate easy paces and hopefully that will have big payoffs come August, September, October because I've, instead of only running for 40 minutes or 45 minutes outside, I was able to run twice that uh, a nice easy pace, kind of the run slow to run fast idea. So that's my approach to treadmill running. Uh, if you have ideas, tips on how you conquer the treadmill and make it so that you can get those winter miles in, please put them in the comments. I'd love to hear them because I need more tips. Why? Because I think that I've made peace with the thing, but 
any additional ways that I can make it a little bit more interesting are definitely appreciated. So let me know down there. I'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, but before I go, I want to talk about two charity runners for the day. We had one yesterday, but it was the, the winter running motivation video. So I didn't want to have like a talking part at the end of it because it would kind of interrupt just like a race video to interrupt kind of like the, the feeling of that video. I like to have those tight and very uh, compact. Yesterday's charity run for the day was PD Cunningham, PD876 on Instagram. And he's gonna be running the 2019 Boston Marathon for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, uh, a very important cause to be running for. It's important to PD as well, as he lost his own father to suicide, unfortunately. I've donated $10 to his cause and I'll post a link in the description in case you'd like to learn more about his heart-wrenching story uh, or about the charity that he's running for. Today's charity runner for the day is Josh Jerome, JC Jerome 53 on Instagram. And he's gonna be running the LA Marathon. I think he's our first LA Marathon runner that we've spotlighted in the channel. And he's gonna be running that marathon for Guide Dogs of America, a foundation that uh, helps provide guide dogs to people in need. I've donated $10 to his cause as well. And if you want to learn about either his or PD's fundraising efforts, I'll post links to both in the description so you guys can learn more. That's all I have for today, everybody. Happy treadmill running. Hope you guys are, if not enjoying it, at least getting in those aerobic base building miles. Thanks so much for watching today's video and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Yo, what's going on?